I'm here to share some fundamentals for booming business, and I will. But first, I want to ask each of you to answer two questions in your mind. The first one is, if I die tomorrow, what I would miss the very most would be, and fill in the blank with just one or two words, what would it be? And my second question is, to me, life is all about, and fill in the blank. Again, with just one or two words. Now, I have asked these same two questions to almost 2,000 people of all ages and backgrounds. And I've learned some interesting things about people's priorities. But one of the first things I learned is the wording of a survey question really matters. With the first question, if I died tomorrow, what I'd miss the very most, I had some smart Alex who said things like, you'd be dead, dude. You can't miss anything when you're dead. I had another smarty pants say the thing he would miss the most, breathing. I also got some memorable answers, like Chick-fil-A and my cows. But as I analyzed the answers to this first question, there was one central theme. A whopping 86% said something about family relationships, such as my spouse or my children. Answers to the second question were a little bit more diverse. When asked, to me, life is all about, 45% said something about family relationships. 23% said life is about happiness. 11% said helping or serving others, with another 11% saying life is about the journey, the experiences, and the choices we get to make. As I analyzed the answers to the second question, I soon realized what was missing from the list. It was the words work and money. In fact, less than 2% said anything related to money or work. Now, that isn't to say that work can't be meaningful, engaging, and enjoyable. I love my job. I get paid to answer cool research questions like this. But today, many people work to live, not live to work. In fact, I would assume that the majority of your most memorable moments in life are probably not at work, even though many of us spend one-third or more of our adult lives working. Even for me, who's just admitted to loving my job, there are stressors and job demands that can cause me to lose focus on what matters most in my life. I recall coming home from work, and as a father of four young children, there were days when I was exhausted. And I admit, after dinner, there were some nights, okay, there were many nights when we couldn't get our children to bed fast enough. I'm sure many of you parents can relate, right? But it seems like the harder we try on those nights, the more likely they are to come out of the rooms. I remember one night, I was so tired. I pleaded with them and then bargained with them, right? $20 bill for those who stay in their beds. <laughs> and I even threatened I'd sell them on eBay if they kept coming out of the rooms, which is illegal, so don't, don't try that. <laughs> and then, of course, I heard it. The sound of a child's footsteps coming down the hall toward our bedroom door I heard a child's hand on our door, and that's when I barked, get back to your room, you're going on eBay. And I heard footsteps race back down the hall. I go to our door, I open it up, and there is a note taped to our bedroom door from our eight-year-old daughter, and this is a copy of the actual note. She says this, thanks a lot. I know it can be hard being a mom or dad, but you got to stick with it. <laughs> And then it says here on the side, look on back. So I flip the note over, and it says, don't worry, we still love you. <laughs> now, as a father and family scientist, I'm still trying to take my daughter's advice and stick with it, knowing that our children still love me. Because she's right. It can be hard being a mom or dad, and balancing the demands of work, parenting, and marriage. Caring for children brings some of life's greatest joys, but also some of the biggest frustrations. Now, don't get me wrong, we love our children, but let's be honest. Don't you get just a little bit excited when they head back to school after a long summer or winter break, right? Okay. No, I promise. We, we really do love our children, especially when they're asleep, right? But as parents today, it seems like there's an unending stream of demands. And we spend countless hours meeting their needs. And it begins the moment they're born. So being a parent is hard, and it is then why do we live together in families? Well, I'm a family scientist, and there is a legitimate answer here. And the answer is, families are crucial because they help meet 
at least three fundamental human needs for surviving and thriving in this life. The first need is safety, including physical and emotional well-being. It's part of our inner drive to survive. As young children, we rely on parents or caregivers to provide food, clothing, shelter, and emotional care to meet our need for safety. And then again, some of us threaten them if they don't stay in their beds, right? The second need is satisfaction or fulfillment, including the desire to acquire, yearning for learning, and moving toward rewards. This is about having fun, learning, growing, and enjoying other life pleasures. For many in my study, this is what life is all about. The third need is the need for connection. We're all born with this longing for belonging, this craving for connection with other people. Children and adults thrive in close, loving relationships. In fact, the quality of our close connections is one of the strongest predictors of how long and how well we'll live in this life. These attachments are powerful and can help us through difficult and challenging times. So again, the fundamentals are safety, satisfaction, and connection. And they don't always come easily. Shortly after my wife and I were married, she began having headaches and experienced numbness, weakness, and all kinds of pain. After four months of numerous tests, scans, and being poked, a specialist sat us down and told us that my wife needed brain surgery. Brain surgery? We were poor, scared, 22-year-olds married less than one year. We had barely started as a family, and right away, our focus and priority was on the need for my wife's safety. On May 21st, 1999, my wife was admitted to a hospital. And after a difficult hug and kiss, telling her I loved her, she was whisked away into a room where a specialist shaved the back of her head and then performed brain surgery, which included removing a one-inch piece of the back of her skull. As I sat in the waiting room, nervous, helpless, and all alone, I wasn't thinking about the university classes or the work I was missing. I was only thinking about my wife and how I loved her more than anything. I was thinking about our connection. You see, to me, and I know from my research that to most of you, family is everything. Well, we're so grateful that the surgery went well and she had a smooth recovery. It still serves as a reminder to me about how important family is. In fact, we have a sign in our home that reads, Family is everything. So what does all this have to do with work and booming business? Well, I'll tell you. As a family life educator, I get to do trainings and conduct research on these three fundamental needs. And not long ago, while traveling down the freeway and passing numerous billboards, some of the messages stood out to me. I saw billboards from banks, car dealerships, and furniture stores that included messages such as, Welcome to the family. Welcome home and think family. I was curious. Now, why would businesses use family in marketing messages? I started to think about how the workplace, similar to a family, can help meet our three fundamental needs of safety, satisfaction, and connection. So I decided to explore this potential relationship. I started by researching the top 346 best places to work in the United States, as rated by Inc.com. In 2019, more than 139,000 employees across the United States rated their workplaces, and 346 came out on top. I wanted to know, what do the top workplaces offer to their employees? Why do they stand out as one of the best places to work? As I reviewed each of their 100-word summaries answering the question, why we think we're a great place to work, I was amazed at how they described their business as well as the specific words they used. I could hardly believe the pattern I discovered. It turns out that the 15 words used most frequently in those descriptions align precisely with the same three fundamental needs for human flourishing with regard to the need for physical and emotional safety. Businesses use words such as benefits, care, environment, help, and support. The top places to work also met the need for satisfaction using words like fun, growth, and perks. But what stood out most to me was the way the top places to work 
meet the deep human need for connection. The words team and culture dominated their descriptions. And I saw the word people, values, home. And the ninth most frequently used word was family. It suddenly hit me that the secret sauce to booming business is meeting the three fundamental human needs and treating employees just like family. Even more, the best places to work not only treat their employees like family, but they aim to strengthen their employees' families. I realized that the very best places to work have a clear understanding that what matters most to their employees, it's not their job. It's their family. And when businesses and organizations focus on improving employees' health, happiness, and relationships at home, and treat them like family at work, then those employees will gladly give their very best on the job. So if successful families can be a model for successful businesses, then all businesses would do well to learn from flourishing families. So what does that look like exactly? Research shows that in strong families, parents express gratitude regularly for acts of kindness and a job well done. Top leaders do the same. In one survey, 81% of employees said that they would work harder for a grateful boss, while 35% report never being thanked by a manager. In happy families, there's plenty of fun and laughter, and the same thing is happening in thriving businesses. When I visited Maloof, one of these top workplaces that I studied, I took a tour of the business with the director of human resources. And about halfway through being shown around, a Nerf football comes whizzing by his head. Suddenly, an employee employee tosses me a Nerf football and tells me to zing the HR director. What do you do in this situation? I barely meet this guy. Do I hand the, the football back? Oh, heck no. I grab the ball, and I drill the HR director in the back. And before I know it, three Nerf footballs are being thrown across the room from team member to team member. I could hardly believe what was happening. This is a hugely successful business, and there's laughing and goofing around. And the head of HR is right in the middle of it. This same director of human resources knew every employee by name. He's giving out high fives and fist bumps. I was witnessing the same type of play that happens in strong families. No wonder it's one of the top places to work in the nation. In flourishing families, members express care kindness and compassion to each other. Again, the top workplaces are doing the same thing. Here's how one manager in one of these top workplaces described it. He said, interaction among among team members is like family. Team members celebrate weddings, baby showers, and birthdays together. We are family friendly and live by the motto, family first. In strong families, parents spend one-on-one time with each child, building the relationship and strengthening the connection. Again, do you see the pattern? Top workplaces are doing the same thing. I know CEOs who send personalized text messages to employees of their one-year anniversaries, thanking them for being part of the team. Others meet with employees at their one-month mark to eat lunch together, to get to know them and their family, and then to share more about the company, the culture, the values and the expectations. If you're listening to this talk, and you're looking for a job at a company that you plan to stay with, both my reasoning and my research say, consider culture over compensation, and positivity as much as a paycheck. The key question to ask oneself is, does it feel like family? And it's easy to tell because a family culture can't be forced, and it can't be faked but it can be felt. If you own a business, manage people at work, or work closely with others, use family values and family fundamentals to guide your decisions and your interactions. Our entire lives should be a reflection and extension of family fundamentals. By implementing this idea into workplace culture, employers who are willing to reinvest in employees will attract and retain top talent, increase work engagement, and sustain positive growth. On an even larger scale, this idea can influence the next generation as they enter the workforce, looking for family cultures of connection, or consider leaving jobs that don't reflect family values 
or fail to meet the fundamental needs of safety, satisfaction, and connection. Can you imagine if schools, businesses, and organizations created family cultures of connection? And in addition to offering EAPs, employee assistance programs, that are hardly used. They offered EFPs, employee flourishing programs, where the investment is not only in their employee's retirement account and responding to problems, but in their entire life journey, providing the very best family science resources to boost employees' physical and mental health, their happiness, nutrition, help them with personal finances, and even their parenting and marriage relationships. Can you imagine, instead of just providing meals for employees, supervisors sit down and eat meals with employees. Instead of just providing a ping pong table, managers make time to play ping pong with employees, engaging and connecting with them, just like a great parent would do. I believe that when family-focused leadership becomes a reality, and the positivity of people becomes a priority, and the fundamentals of family science are infused into workplaces. This secret sauce will lead to a transformation in organizations and businesses never before seen. Now that you've heard my idea, think back to your answers to my original questions. What's life about? Who would you miss the most? If family or relationships are a part of either answer, will you join me in extending this concept of family fundamentals that you value? Treat work like family. Bring safety, satisfaction, and connection into your work family. After all, with one-third or more of your adult life spent at work, it's worth the investment. Thank you.